Let's look at the string combiner. And what we see here is basically a principal uh, picture of a string combiner. We see three strings. Each of the strings has seven panels. The, strings, the three strings are connected in parallel. We see the plus side on the left and we see the minus side on the right. They're all connected together through fuses within a combiner box. It's a string combiner box. What comes out of the combiner box is one common plus and one common minus. DC voltages going out to a DC disconnect switch. Surge protection. We, we spoke about it before. So that's a principal picture of a combiner. It's all on the DC system, the DC side of the PV system, and all what it does, through internal fuses, combine all the DC voltages together. And this is another little bit more detailed presentation of a PV system, especially em special emphasis on the combiner box. We see the panels, DC cables going into the uh, combiner box. From the combiner box goes into inverter, inverter to a meter, meter to AC disconnect, AC disconnect to AC service panel. The combiner is right next to the panels. In order not to have many DC cables running all the way to the inverter, so the combiner combines all the DC cables, the pluses together and the minuses together, and only two cables running to the inverter. On the right hand side, we see a typical PV combiner box. There are many different configurations of the com of combiner boxes, but that's, a co that's a one particular configuration. Please note, a combiner has internal fuses. Each plus line, each minus line, has its own personal fuse. And this is again another presentation of a uh, photovoltaic system and its own grid in this case. Please note that number three and number five. Number three is the AC, the DC combiner. It's on the roof, in the center, in the middle of the PV array. Very, very important. We want to shorten the length of the DC cable, keep them to the minimum. Make sure that there will be as least amount of voltage drop on one end and as least amounts of susceptibility to over voltage, uh, uh, over voltage transients. So we, we put the combiner on the roof right next to the panels. And then we go with the red line that combines all the voltages and the voltage level in the red line is higher, 600 volt DC, 800, 1000 volt DC, down into safety switch and inverter, like we've seen before. But the, the emphasis on this particular one is that the combiner is in the middle of the array on the roof. Now we're going an off-grid system, a little bit more in depth. Panels on the roof, going down to PV combiner. In this particular case, the PV combiner is not in the roof, it's on the ground level. The reason that it's in the ground level is because in some cases, even having a combiner up there, and high voltages coming out of the combiner, that it's so high, so it's very sensitive to over voltage uh, transients. So sometimes we prefer, and we will get in the seminar to a specific session considering engineering design parameters, we will understand when to put the combiner, in which cases to put the combiner on the roof and in which cases to put the combiner down in the ground level. In this stage of the seminar, I will just say that the reason that the combiner is on the ground level, it's because the voltages 
coming out of the combiner is a very, very high voltage, and the voltages coming into the combiner are very low voltages. And in a larger array, we prefer to put the combiner down in the ground level, close to the inverter. From the combiner, it goes to a charge controller. We are talking about off-grid system. In previous sessions, we discussed about charge controllers. Charge controller is connected to a battery bank right on the bottom. The battery bank, bank connects to a DC disconnect and goes to the inverter. The other side of the inverter is the AC side and it goes to an AC a panel, distribution box we, call, we can call it, but please note the inverter has two disconnect, two disconnect systems, one, a side, one AC and one DC. The DC comes out from the DC disconnect, which get all the DCs from the battery. So when the batteries start operating and provide electricity, this electricity is varying electricity, depends on how much voltage the battery have. Batteries turn to discharge themselves either as they provide this electricity. So their level of voltage goes down and up. They are being discharged by the, through the controller. They are, they are being charged, I'm sorry, through the controller, discharged to the, themselves to the inverter. So their voltage level is varying. And this, this is the reason that we put a DC disconnect immediately after the uh, battery bank. Because as the voltage goes down, it becomes more susceptible to overvoltage over surges. Again, signal to noise ratio. Voltage level goes down means more susceptibility to noises. The ratio S to N, signal to noise, becomes bigger. This is why we put the DC disconnect immediately after the battery bank. Now I would like to share with you the aspects of filtering. It's not only the disconnection that uh, we, we look after when we design a system. It's not only the protection from over voltages. There are some over voltages which do not get to a level that might create a damage. It's just over voltage, but not to a level that really devices will be destroyed. For these, we have filters. Filters will filter out certain spikes, certain surges of the overvoltage level will keep them away from the system, will bring them down to zero, and the signals after at the output of the filter will be more clean, meaning that overvoltage will look at the system, we look at the overvoltage as almost like a DC variation for a short period of time, but the DC variation, not spikes, not pulses. The filtering will take out the pulses, the spikes, these transients, the surges, will convert the surges into some kind of a variable DC level. There is on the bottom and the middle, there is an isolation transformer. We have two filters and in the middle we have isolation transformer. Isolation transformer by itself can be looked at as a filter because the primary winding are separated from the secondary priming and only electromagnetic can go from one side to another, from the primary to the secondary but there is no electrical connection. So this is why we put a, a transformer in the middle and it's in a ratio of one to one. 
230 volt goes in, 230 volt will go out. But there will be no electrical contacts. So over voltage current cannot flow through the transformer. It will have an effect. The electromagnetic field, which is being generated by these spikes, the surges, the over voltage, will actually go through the transformers. But current, actual current, will be blocked because secondary and primary windings have no electrical contacts. A typical example of a combiner box with its internal devices, internal units. We can see the enclosure. Some, enclo some enclosures are fiberglass made. Some of them are metallic. If they are metallic, on the bottom left corner, we will see, we can see the cable, which is a ground cable connected the box to the door in order to keep them both at the same potential. So we ground them together. So from a grounding point of view, it's like a one system. PV array connections come from the top. On the right hand side, we see an array of fuses. And the pluses and minuses, these voltages coming out of the panels, go in to the line, to the bus on the right hand side. Each of them goes, each line goes to a fuse. The output goes to an inverter connection, the positive output. At the end of this bus, we can see in the center, it goes to a positive plus. The ones from the top are the negative DC coming from the panels, coming from the arrays. Now, we have ground bars on the lower left and on the bottom of the three units are the outputs of the combined DC voltages going down through the box, through the bottom facade of the box, down to the inverter. So when we once we close this particular box, Tens of wires going into that box from the strings and panels from the right hand side, the positive ones. Three, four negative ones combined go from the top and the common DC goes from the bottom down to the inverter. There are different examples of combiner boxes which are pre-wired pre-assembled in a manufacturer. We can go out and buy a complete device like this. They, they put together, they assemble for us set of fuses, set of SPDs, set of switches, all based on UL1741, this standard UL1741 is a standard which a combiner box should obey, should be based on. Please keep in mind UL1741. It's a very, very important one. It deals with internal noises in the combiner box. It deals with um, IP, IP65, IP66, IP67, 68, 69 which are basically how much um, that box is hermetically sealed, preventing all kind of environmental condition outside environmental conditions affected. This is why the grounding is very, very significant part of the UL 1741. So there are different examples for different applications, all to combine many DC lines coming from strings and panels into two common cables plus and minus going out to the inverter.